Hey, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy. And today I'm going to be talking about the difference between exhaling through your mouth versus exhaling through your nose. The big thing to remember is that your exhale, whether through your mouth or through your nose, more so elicits a parasympathetic nervous response in your system as opposed to your inhale, which elicits more of a sympathetic response in your system. And the longer you can extend your exhale, the more likely you are to activate that PNS response. Also, the longer you can extend your exhale, the more you improve your CO2 tolerance, which in and of itself offers benefits that might be considered synonymous with activating your relaxation response or your parasympathetic nervous response. So through the nose or through the mouth? Exhaling through an open mouth like this tends to lead to a faster, less controlled exhale, which means less time to elicit a PNS response. And it also feeds back to your brain that you have very little tolerance for CO2 meaning you need to blow off that CO2 quickly in order to regulate and feel comfortable. This in turn can lead to a faster resting respiratory rhythm and symptoms of over breathing. Exhaling through pressurized lips like this You can see how extended that exhale is, right? Even though it's through an open mouth, I could exhale that way forever. This style of exhale allows most people to slow down and control their exhale maximally, receiving those benefits that I mentioned earlier of PNS activation and also improved CO2 tolerance. So you can see the difference, right? Between number one, And number two, the first one is a quick release, which in some cases may feel psychologically relieving. It's sort of symbolic of letting it all go. But the second one could go on forever, as you heard. And that's where you're really going to get those physiological benefits. And then exhaling through the nose is always great, but especially if you're able to do it in that same slow and controlled manner as through pressurized lips. I leave this up to your personal preference. Some people may feel that they can exhale more slowly and with greater control through pressurized lips, while others may feel that they have optimal control when exhaling through their nose. Experiment a little bit on your own and see what works best for you. I would be remiss in not mentioning that for about three years, I have guided people through an integrative breathwork technique that does have an open-mouthed component. Now you can judge me for that if you want, but the goal or the intention of this particular style of breathwork is much more psycho-emotional and psycho-spiritual in nature. And while any breathwork facilitator observing the body purely through a physiological lens might be horrified by the idea of breathing in and out through the mouth, I would feel disrespectful in denying the seemingly magical results of the teachers and facilitators who have been practicing that style of breathwork with success for decades. I also can't deny the overwhelming anecdotal evidence that I've seen in my own practice of clients experiencing radical transformation, meaning almost instantaneous resolution of deeply seated emotional and physical pain. In this style of breathwork, the open mouth exhale is similar to what I described earlier. It's designed to symbolically encourage the body to let go on a physical level, on an emotional level, and on a psycho-spiritual level. To let go with ease, without resistance, and without feeling the need to control every little thing, every little moment of the day. 
The human tendency toward attachment and holding on to stuff can be the source of great physical, emotional, and spiritual pain for many people. So for many of us then, the learning to let go can be very liberating. There is definitely a correct way to breathe for overall health, fitness, and longevity. But that does not mean that there is not also great value to be gotten from breath techniques that are more focused on the spiritual aspects of the human experience rather than purely on the physical and physiological aspects of the human experience. There is not one singular breath technique that is going to function perfectly for every single person. So whenever considering taking on a new breath practice, it's important to consider the following things. Number one, your intention. Number two, your long-term goals. Number three, your health profile. Number four, your current breathing mechanics. And number five, how much time you are genuinely able to commit to taking on a new practice and creating a new habit. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.